Hey there, Circus Snacks. Welcome back to Vorpal Tales Presents Awesome Adventures on Onyx Path. Yay! As always, I am your host, still a cool cat and kitten, Space Lord Pajamas. Let's introduce our intrepid adventurers, Amber, Devin, Dixie, and Eddie. How you doing, Awesome Sauces? Tell us who you are and what you'll be playing tonight and where people can find you. That was a lot. That was just like a lot of introduction. <laughs> so much introduction. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dixie Cochran. Uh, I w work at Onyx Pass. I wrote on this book. I'm very excited to play it. And I will be playing Jisk Everchild, who is definitely not a mouse, but actually a snake. But has a mouse hat. You can find me at Dixie Cyanide, and I'm so excited. How about you, Eddie? Um, uh, my name's Eddie Webb. Uh, I am one of the in-house developers at Onyx Path. I am the uh, creator of the Realms of Pugmire, and I was a developer on Squeaks to Deep. Uh, and today I'm Playing? Is that, is that the right word? Yeah, Playing? yeah, you are not running the game for once. <laughs> yeah. I've never heard that word before. It's very strange to me. Um, <laughs> no, I am playing uh, Basil Calabash, uh, who is a psychic mouse. Um, and yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Oh, also, my pronouns are she, her, and Jessica's pronouns are he, him. Yes, my the pronouns game. are he, him, as well as uh, Basil's. Amber? Go ahead. Hi guys, um, my name is Amber. My pronouns are she, her. Uh, you can find me all over the internet as the Rebel Selkie. Um, you can also follow me in my misadventures up here in Buffalo, New York at one of the tiniest uh, tiniest game shops in the world, Gathering Game Buffalo, that's on Instagram. Uh, and I am playing Lily tonight and her pronouns are also she, her. Hi all, uh, I'm Devin. And uh, you can find me online at Sort of Sullied. And tonight I am playing Stradeo McSqueaks. He is a uh, rascal mouse. Nice. Uh, we here at Vorpal Tales are being the best allies that we can be and encourage others to do the same. Freedom is the right someone. of... No, and that's not true. Two. Hi. Zach. I'm Zachary Naldre. He him. Wow, I left you out of the <laughs> order. How did that happen? Holy crap. I can be... I can be found at Zach Rules. Uh, my name says can't below. Be found. <laughs> well, see, when he started, I wasn't in the right spot, so everything got no. Screwed it up, wasn't. So it, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll say that and keep going moving forward. Tonight, I'm playing Sonoran Rattail. Excellent. Um, so yeah, just be excellent to each other and find ways to get involved and better your community. Um, be awesome to each other. And uh, for those of you following along at home, tonight's awesome adventure is. A true favorite of mine, uh, Onyx Path, uh, Realms of Pugmire, Squeaks in the Deep. Um, Eddie, this is Squeaks. Uh, Squeaks is the next Kickstarter. Is that correct? Yes, it, it's just started today. Um, you know, took a little while to get there, but it, it went live at two o'clock today, and we've already funded, which is great. So excited about that. We're actually about two hundred and twenty-five percent, if my math is correct. Um, but yeah, we still have a long way to go. Um, potentially get a lot of stretch goals to hit. So, uh, if folks want to check it out, uh, I will drop the uh, link into the chat so people can go look at it. If, even if you package is $5, you can get the full manuscript over the course of it. And so you can play with all the rules that we'll be playing with today. Awesome. <clears throat> cool. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, this episode is brought to you by Queso Blanco's Acid Seas Tours. Two of the islands of the Acid Seas. Be a good be a good cat a good dog i spelled that wrong or swell cat and head down to your nearest pub ask for suave this is absolutely not a scam queso blanco's acid sea sewers <clears throat> uh thanks to onyx path publishing for creating some awesome systems and thank you eddie for creating pugmire it's really one of my favorites um as always, we are using Astral Tabletop, uh, the delicious awesome sauce of online gaming tools, allowing friends to digitally roll some bones together. <clears throat> You can always find us role-playing, live-tweeting, updating, recapping on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and YouTube at Forple Tales. More importantly, subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Tales. <clears throat> and with the introduction out of the way, we can get to why everyone's here. Who enjoyed digging holes as a kid? Or, I guess, if you still enjoy digging holes. I can't say I, I enjoyed that now. <laughs> Not now? <laughs> <laughs> Or as a kid, I hated being dirty. Yeah, really? I know. yeah. I just yeah. read books inside. Right. <laughs> it was boring. I, I enjoyed I was... digging holes just to make them be filled up with water because Florida. Right. I oh, did okay, just dig fair. holes at the beach. That was that was okay. Yeah, 
Okay. Now, I, I, I guess I'm the only one that, like, actively dug holes in people's and yards. I am still digging holes. Oh. But of the metaphorical kind. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, <laughs> oh, I dig myself I mean... into a lot of holes, but that's a whole completely different thing. Yeah, that's, um, I have a steam shovel up back for that, that practice. Um... <laughs> As I have age, I have gone from the physical to the metaphysical with my hole digging. Cool. All right. Wow. All right. Digging holes. Not awesome. Awesome. Um, tonight, we began... I'll learn something about you today, Sean. I know. I, f I feel weird now. I don't... I don't... Do you guys still I... want to hang out with me, the hole digger? You know, I think I think we can just stop right now and go home. Like I'm All trying right. to take out this makeup. I don't. I, don't I found I found I, holes that were already dug and just crawled into them. If that helps, you feel I, better. I'm hanging out with you for your cats. I, I prefer you to be a hole digger than a gold digger. Oh, the, that's true. And also, the cats I are locked out of the room. a hole digger. Yeah. Anyway. Just thinking that. Man. Cool. I uh, I used to go caving. Does that help? Oh no, that's um. The lunking. Yeah, caves no, that's are cool. cool. Caves, caves are, are cool. cool. Except for that one in the descent. That cave is not cool. Oh yeah, no, f that cave. That cave is bad. That that's if bad. If you're cave. the monsters, it's a cool cave. It is a cool cave if you're a monster. <gasps> yeah. Um, speaking of monsters and caves, uh, tonight, <laughs> tonight we begin our awesome adventures with Squeaks in the Deep, published by Onyx Path. <clears throat> uh, so. Possum Junction, once a desolate isle out in the acid seas, now, now a port of call along the trade routes, home to a plastic mine of great quantities. The joint effort between Pugmire and Mal to extract these riches came under the care of Sir Walter Terrier Wags and the Duchess Poppins Gigglebottom Von Mal. <clears throat> the, two old f the two were old friends and their stewardship graced all who came under their rule with an air of friendship and cooperation. The two grew the city in a grand port that was the might amongst the ports of call along the acid seas. Those tragedies struck a few weeks ago. The great Sir Walter Wags, who lived a grand and joyous life, passed in his sleep, much to the heartbreak of not only the city of Possum Junction, but the Duchess especially. A grand celebration was held in his honor, stories were told of his great deeds, and finally he was laid to rest in a tomb made of marble within the gardens of the palace. Every day since, the Duchess has spent the morning somberly speaking to her old friend as the sun rises. However, the other day, the Duchess was horrified not to find the great tomb, but a hole in the ground. At the edge of the hole was a polished white rat skull. The Duchess sent a message out to her sister, the dread pirate Queso, to scour the seas for the best delvers of the deep to bring back to Possum Junction and set them to the task of discovering what happened to the tomb of Sir Walter Wags. <clears throat> you stand before the Duchess in her court. At the side is the great dread pirate Queso, with her witchfire hair under a wide brim hat. Next to her is a small, fluffy ball of stringy fur with an even bigger hat than Queso's, and two beady, eye beady eyes glaring at her with great disdain. They're all manner of dogs, cats, lizards, birds, and rodents dressed in their finery, murmuring, murmuring what ill tidings the dread pirate brings. Dear sister, whom have you brought before me? asked the Duchess. The hatted white cat gleams widely at a few of you who are standing in the middle of the court. Arr, my dear sister, how it pleases me to present to you these great finds amongst the talented of the shores of the seas of Pugmire, Mao, and even beyond and beneath. Ah, do present yourselves proudly to my sister, and she gestures to you there in the center. Introduce yourselves to everyone and the Duchess. Azul steps forward. Um, he is a mouse a little bit taller than normal, not quite as tall as a rat, but um, for kind of a little taller for a mouse, lean, um, wearing a kind of a battered uh, jacket. Uh, he tries to keep it neat, but lots of kind of stitching held together. And he says, I am Basil Calabash. I am here to help as best as I can. Seeker she, of mysteries. She nods at you. Excellent, excellent. Who's next? Hey, 
Hey, um, so my name's Norin. Uh, I was part of Lady Becca Chihuahua's team that went out and found that relic that made her family all big and popular in Pugmire. And I had a lot of fun doing it, and I want to go out and help other people do find stuff. Excellent, excellent. Next! Uh, Jesk, who is a small green snake, he is not a scary looking serpent man. He is a little chubby nosed short snake. He's about the size actually of the bison rat, so he's smaller than your average serpent. Um, and he just kind of sticks his head around around Basil. Just out behind his. I'm Jesk. Is, is that all? Jesk, ever child. Oh. Are there any great wondrous tales about your 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 personage no oh i make bombs oh now we know my my sister went and found you <clears throat> uh who's next who's next uh lily steps forward uh she's rather on the small side lots of like dark clothing a little bit patchy as well and she just Gives a nod and says, I'm Lily, and I'm just here for the experience. Excellent, excellent. And, My um, mom made me this hat. Oh, it's a very nice hat. It's it's very nice. It's ears and all. Are you a mouse? No, my friends are mice, and I wanted to fit in. And also, it's very cold where they live for me, because there's no sun. Oh, Excellent, I think. I'm just and staying warm. Good, good. To, the the fire's just over there. If you need to stay a little bit warmer, um, is any anybody else? Any others? Uh, yes, I am Stradio McSqueaks. Recently, I just helped uh, discover a vault that was deep, deep, deep underground. Oh, excellent! How adventurous! Uh, I believe that's everyone. And the the Duchess kind of gazes at you after her introductions, and she goes to say something to you, but the doors of the court burst open. A tall, lanky brown dog of the smoothest fur, wearing a fine golden tunic with a collar of fine thread and rhinestones, with a wide, crinkly set of breeches upon his bum, strides forth. Ho there! I am Cosmos Duchin, the soiled... I have been sent as an intermediary, intermediary assistant to the acting secretary, emissary of Pugmire. You are all honored to be in my presence. <clears throat> kind of waits there as if expecting applause or some other grand notion of his arrival. As he sees that he's not going to get it. <clears throat> look, at, look around at everybody else. <laughs> Everybody's just kind of like, okay, cool. <laughs> <You're>, <clears throat> well, well, Duchess. I have heard that you sent for someone to investigate this accursed matter. Did you not? Uh, well, yes, I did. I was just about to inform them of their expected duties. Were you, he says, circling your group, gazing upon you with a discerning eye. He pauses for a moment, grimaces, and then suddenly he has a relaxed look on his face. And there's like a tinge of poo in the air for a moment. <clears throat> what makes them so special? That just covers his nose for a moment. It's like, well... You just miss, miss that part, actually. <clears throat> kind of looks at you and... <clears throat> well, let's hear it again. And he strides up next to the Duchess' seat. And Queso kind of sniffs for a moment and makes a face and scoots away. And the Duchess makes a calculated decision to get up and from her chair and approach your, your group. Far, far from the soiled Dotson. <clears throat> well, we've heard of your accolades, so I see no reason for Mr. Com Cosmos to be briefed on them again for his tardiness. Uh, my sister has satisfied me with your credentials, and I'm pleased to hear that you are here. <clears throat> uh, well, I'm going to call you my champions. My champions, you've been called upon for the gravest matters. She pauses um, to chuckle for her inadvertent pun for the moment. Um, the, the two of my great partner and companion, Sir Walter Wags, disappeared. Along with what's left, and on all that was left, was a hole. 
along with this polished skull. And she kind of hands it out to you, waiting for one of you to take it. Grab it. Okay. Uh, my seers have divined a great evil from its presence, and our seer has spoken of a great curse that will befall our wonderful hamlet if this matter is not attended. It falls to you, my champions. You will be provided with provisions and gear. You are to descend into this hole and find what has become of the tomb of my recently departed friends. Your rewards will be whatever I can afford to see that this is supposed curse never comes to pass. Duchess makes her way across the court to the entrance, and now I must take my leave of you. My sister, Queso, and I... And I suppose Master Cosmos can assist you with anything further, should it be needed. And the Duchess leaves, and Queso strides up, very pirate-like, up next to you, and she's like, Arr, I'll be waiting in the gardens to send you off to your duties, my pretties. See you there. <clears throat> Master Cosmos descends on you rather quickly. There's a definite funk in the air. Kind of looks at you, and I'll be watching you. We'll certainly be smelling you. Hmm? I smell with my tongue. Please don't. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, he leaves you, stops at the door, leaning against it for a moment, and kind of lifts his legs a minute, and then shakes it about for a moment, moment and then squishes the tuft in his breeches, and then disappears back into the palace. <clears throat> Delvers of the Deep, you were left to yourselves for a moment with only what you brought with you. A few traveling sacks and a polished white skull of a rodent. What do you do? I would like to uh, use my knowledge of the mystic and arcane to see if the skull itself is cursed or if perhaps this is just a strange coincidence. Uh, sure, go ahead. Give it a roll. First roll of the night. Dale roll the gladly game. hands it off to you now <laughs> after the uh, evil totem just mentioned. Oh, shit, evil. Um, let's see, that's 15, 19, 20. 20 total? Oh, nice. Um, there doesn't seem to be necessary, the item itself does not seem to be cursed, but you feel unsettled holding it. It almost seems more like it's a sign or portent of things to come. Hmm. But you feel, you feel like you should hold on to it just for, it might come in handy later just to see what might happen with it. I will set it in between the group and it's like that is has no obvious magical or psychic impressions, but I we should probably hold on to it, I suppose. Just yes, just looks it all over with his magnifying glass. It probably didn't see anything either. It's probably not cursed. <clears throat> okay. A mouse so... or a rat. Uh is the um Indecipherable at the moment. You definitely know that it's like a rodent. Either a large skull. mouse or a small rat. Yeah, somewhere in between. <laughs> Basil, is it your skull? Bas Basil. No, no, no. My skull is still inside my head. That's that's good. Because you're a, a large mouse. Thank you. You are a small snake. If we are done with the obvious. No, I'm category. talking about the skull being the size of your skull. Yes. But Basil, it's not not cursed. It's, okay. It's, it's, okay. Oh, I, put it, I put it in my back. Yeah. It is it is a portent. Um but there is also a chance it could have been part of a cat's ritual or could have been just a memento from someone. Could have been for all I know, a memento of the cult of Laboratory. I mean, but it's not directly cursed, no. Do you know what else is a portent? I'm afraid to ask, but what? A fishing net makes a very portent. Wow. Yes, I, we've talked about this. Uh, what? I don't get it. <laughs> it's just true. A skull makes a portent. A fishing net makes a portent. Anything well, with I mean, holes in it makes a portent. You have to just be really small for the skull to be a a, a, a good tent, though. That's true. I was for, us it be a, for us, it would be a poor tent, but... I, 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 
Yes. Do we know anything about the missing individual besides the fact that they are unable to live in a skull? Uh, you know that he was once the ruler with the Duchess. You've heard of his tales. He was a great warrior and proud individual. Um, just your standard heroic type. Um, he was here as the emissary from Pugmire for the mining venture that's here. Um, other than, there would be no reason for someone to make off with his tomb. It seems very weird. The entire tomb sinking into the ground is very strange, but also this is an island, so I don't know what's underneath us besides water and sand. We, we know he was dead. Are we sure it's not his skull? Maybe they didn't take everything. No, he was a dog and this he is was a, a rat skull. Oh, yeah. uh, thank you. Unless it was a very small dog shaped like a rat, like that Chihuahua family. He was I, a they, Chihuahua. They don't like that. They don't like that. <laughs> or maybe his skull was reshaped into a rat skull. There are all possibilities. We should go in the hole. Well, should we get like, see if we can get like more food and stuff? Well, it would seem a source of light would be a more immediate concern. You have a sack next to you that has like rations and torches and like climbing gear and things like that. So they've actually oh, provided we'll put that you with. <laughs> it's been there. I've got candles. I can see in the dark. I thought most of you could see in the dark. Well, yes, but that does not mean that seeing in some dark and seeing in complete blackness are in fact two different states. I'm aware of that. So having light in those states where we are unable to see completely would best be beneficial. That's true. Okay. And we sorted this out. Um, yeah, I just kind of dig through the bag. Um, Looks like it, it, it just sounds like it just supplies torches. Stuff, yeah. So. Um, do we need to mark this down their rucksack, or is it just kind of assumed we have appropriate adventuring gear? Uh, yeah, this would be the GM's way of basically saying if you need it for, uh, you know, dungeon delving or whatever, it's probably in this sack. Common common items and gear that wouldn't already be in in your rucksack. It is a quantumly defined adventurer's sack. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> If you need it, it's probably in there. If it's magical, it's probably not in there. What if I need a baked sweet potato? Uh, I mean, I would could... fall under rations. Yes, <laughs> there is a sweet potato in there. You would have. I to don't eat vegetables. Yourself. I'm a snake. Oh. <laughs> I was asked, aren't you a strict carnivore? I'm sorry. Aren't you a strict carnivore? Actually, I'm one of the very few varieties of lizards that lives off eggs. Good to know. That's part of why they thought it was safe for me to be around the population. That makes sense. For a moment, I thought you just went vegan. No, I can't <laughs> live like that. I eat eggs, and then I regurgitate the shell, so I'd rather you not look at me while I'm doing that. I would rather not look at you while you're doing that either. I'm glad we're on the same page. Okay. I'll eat alone, as usual. Is the shell still good, though, afterwards? What are eggshells good for? Besides walking on. Not a tent, well, apparently. It... What? What are they good for? Not a tent, apparently. If you were very small, you could use an eggshell as a tent. I will turn and go towards the hole. <laughs> <laughs> so you walk out the, the court doors and it leads into a, a very wide and lovely garden. Um, you can see Case of the Pirate standing off to one side of the garden. Um, kind of tapping her foot, looking at her wa her pocket watch, and then kind of like, oh, waves at you and kind of calls you over to uh, the hole. Uh, is there anyone else that doesn't go to the hole, or is there anything else that you're doing before going to the hole? Um, gra I grab some torches out of the bag. If mm -hmm. there's a pick or a pickaxe or a shovel or something to dig with. Okay. Yeah, other than that, I'm going to the hole. Okay. <clears throat> The we go. Have known we were going to turn this into a whole endeavor, I would have came more prepared to the stream. <laughs> Queso greets you and kind of and bows, tosses her hat in front of you, and just like, Our, we're not sure of its depths, but um, we did put a ladder. It's it's more of a gesture. We don't think it reaches the bottom. Are there any questions? 
Hopefully not, because I probably don't have any answers. Prettyus. Well, in that case, we will be on our way. Excellent. Good luck. Good journey. Have fun. Don't die. Thank you. Thanks. I will do what I can. <clears throat> kind of walks off, saunters off. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so you're looking at a fairly nice big hole. Goes deep into the black. And there is a rope ladder. Um, you're not sure of its length, the depth of the hole, or anything like that. Is there, like, I'm just going to like loose pebbles around? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Toss one into the hole. Toss one in the hole. Can we maybe toss a, a lit torch down there as well? That's, that's taking a while. There could be gas. Could be. Sure. Better have to know now, though. So throw a light torch down there. <laughs> Again, it goes. You can actually see it past the end of the ladder as it flashes. And then it goes, gets dark, dark, dark. It hits for a moment and then instantly goes out. Okay, well, I'm going to cast Spider Climb. And oh. I'm just going to go down this edge of this hole because I can do that. <laughs> okay. Um, awesome. Yeah, I can now move vertically and... Parts, like I, I, I can move on any surface now, essentially. Cool. Um, and for, for for those who don't know, snakes in Pugmire, um, specifically that their lizard family, they don't have legs. Uh, they have arms, and then they have a, a tail, like a World of Warcraft naga or that one D and D race. Um, so yeah, so just just kind of like looks at the torch, looks at that, and it's like I'll go, I'll go check. I'll so go you go down. You go into I the hole. Slither down the side. You're slithering down the side, and then you get to where the hole just sort of opens up into a large cavern. Um, and you're, I guess you're upside down, looking further down. Yeah, the ladder doesn't go all the way down. And you can actually see now um, there's a faint blue light um, further down. Um, and it almost looks like, do you have dark, do you have dark vision? I do. Uh, what's the length of that? I can't remember. Maybe it's 60. 60? Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks it look, just in case <laughs> it look, you look down and yeah, it's a ways down there. Probably another eight, 60, 80 feet. Um, and it looks like there's water, maybe hmm. shallow water. So I slow back up and I pop my head out the hole. And I say, it's very deep. Do we have 60 to 80 feet of rope or a um, 60 to 80 foot ladder? We have we have the, in, uh, including or in addition to the ladder that's already there. In addition. In addition. Do um, I have fifty. I've got fifty. Okay, yeah. so let's tie some ropes together, and then you could all come down the ropes. Do I would cast this on all of you, but then I would use up all of my energy for today and would have to sleep all night. Do we cast? So do we tie it up here, or do we go down to the bottom? I was going to tie it to the bottom rung because I can okay. do that, not being that on the ladder. That works. That works. We, we'll feed you the rope so that you don't actually have to carry it while you're climbing down. That's helpful. Thank you. Although I'm not actually climbing, I'm just walking on the wall. You don't just just in case it's too heavy for you to walk with sideways. I don't know. Okay. And gets so, slithers back down. Slithers back down. And you actually kind of slither on the ladder, and we'll just say your powers work on that, too. So you're just on the edge of the ladder. You pull it up. You tie it off. And then you, that rope's tied. You t give it a good tug. You think you tied a good knot. And, um, yeah, you think you're good to go. Okay. Who wants to slide down the rope first? That is not my area of expertise. I'll go first to test it out. Okay. Are you the lightest? I think no. you're the no. Who's the okay. lightest mouse? I think that would be me, right? You should go first. Or me, one of us. Okay. Which one of you is the least useful? <laughs> I'm wounded. Well. <laughs> oh, you're wounded? Then I should go because that might be dangerous. No, I mean, I, I emotionally, I'm wounded. Physically, I'm probably consternated. But you know, 
uh, I, I don't mind going first. Somebody's always the least useful. It's usually me, so I, I'm, I just thought I'd I, ask. I'm just good to hide behind, so... Right. But see, if if I'm the the heaviest and I can go down it, then everybody else can go down it because it works for me to work for everybody else. Makes him a compelling point. Plus, if he's the first one, then we don't have to worry about him accidentally falling on us. Also true. It's true. And if he does fall, at least he will cushion. Make a, he will make a wonderful cushion. Yeah, that's exactly it. You look you would be a darling pillow. Okay, Ooh. you go down first. All right, I'm gonna crawl on down. Jessica's just like chilling sideways by the end of the ladder. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Show off. Uh, Zach, how do you say your character's name again? Sonorin. Sonorin. Sonorin goes down, cl- climbs down to the end of the ladder, and you just swing in out in empty space, and there's that, that rope below you. Um, you grab onto it real quick, and how do you proceed down the rope? Do you just slide? Do you carry yourself? What do you do? I'm going to do the thing where you like kind of wrap your arm around the rope a little bit so you can slowly kind of go down a little bit um, like the people who rock climb when they're coming down. Okay. Except it, there's no hook on it, so I'm using my arm for that purpose. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah, you make your way down and um, it, uh, you start to see and you can kind of see what Jesk saw earlier, which was... Um, kind of a, a, a blue luminescence under a, a rippling sort of creek or a pool of water. Um, and the rope uh, comes to the the just to the very tip of the water and then you can easily sort of swing on to some, some land that's next to it. And there you are. I can I tell if the water's deep? It's shallow where you are now, probably maybe only a foot or two, but then you can definitely tell it gets pretty deep the further it goes out in the, into the back of this cavern, where there's actually like a waterfall um, that seems to be almost like seawater spilling in from the outside. <clears throat> and there's this brackish smell uh, there in the cavern. Are you alive, Snorin? I'm alive. It's blue down here. I Y'all like come blue. down. Okay. Jess will also go down using, yes, his 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 arms, but also his tail is like wrapped around the rope as he goes down. It's kind of yes. like a little slinky. <clears throat> you get to the bottom, and uh, yeah, there you are too on the edge of um, very, kind of a very pr- pretty but smelly pool of water. And uh, uh, there's like blue coral or like luminescent um, uh, sponges and things in the water that are kind of giving some light to this cavern. Come down, everybody. Not at one time. That would be a bad idea. We can only catch one of you at a time. (laughs) If you jump in the water, you'll probably die. It's not very deep. Stradeo will head down. Yeah, I'll go down after... Strido. <laughs> Strido. <laughs> Excellent. Um, you all plant your feet firmly. Um, I don't have feet. Right. Sorry. Feet and wow. tail on wow. the shore. Um, you're at the. You're in this wide cavern. Your rope's there. Um, there is a, a a large pool of water. Um, where there, yeah, like I said, there's a waterfall coming in. There's weird corals and sponges and things that are luminescent there that kind of light up the far side. Uh, where you're at is pretty dark. And, um, <clears throat> yeah. What do you do? How's, how's our collective vision in this situation? Do we need a light source or we could go without? <clears throat> yeah, who has dark vision and who doesn't? I don't remember if this character does or does not because it was written uh, down. I would have put it not. in your traits, I want to say, on the second it's a, page. It, it's a trick for mine. Yes, oh, it should okay, be a secret no. or a trick. Yeah. Okay, then no. Depending on what you're using. Okay, cool. I, I do not have that knack. Oh, all right. Um, so for most of you, all you can really see is like the blue haze and uh, it doesn't light up the room very well. Um, for those with dark vision, you can actually see pretty clearly. This is a pretty wide cavern, but not too wide. 
and um, there's just against the wall, one of the walls on the far side, opposite the waterfall, is um, some rocks and stone that looks like a broken structure. Can I kind of wade over there and check that out? Uh, yeah, you can walk over to the, um, walk over there. It's not in the water. It's like the water's over here on the right and the, the stone thing's over here on the left. So you can kind of walk over to the stone thing on the left. Pick and, up. uh. Sorry. Oh, go ahead, Dixie. What were you say, saying? I'm going to pull out one of the torches and press the digitation, light it just so that people can see what's going on. Okay, excellent. Now you're, it's pretty well lit. Um, and yeah, making a lot of noise, but that really sort of sets the place off. Um, you can actually see that, yeah, it looks like some broken marble and some pillars and things. It looks like the tomb itself is here. That looks tombish. Tomey? Tomb-like? Tomb-like. Like a tomb. <laughs> like a tomb. <laughs> so we should go check it out, then. Yeah. The tomey roomy. Uh, Sounds like a you... dance. As you walk over there with your lit torch, um, the only warning that you get is a faint chittering sound, barely heard over the gentle silicine of water. A sleek bat-like shape swoops down from the blackness of the cavern ceilings far above. Uh, everybody give me initiative. No, bats are friends. Not this bat, apparently. Not bats bat. are my favorite animal. Seventeen. Seventeen? Nineteen. Nineteen. What? Thirteen. All right. Because I've got a plus zero to it. Uh, Who was the other nineteen? Me. I have a plus two. I plus three. Do you want to go first? Oh, no. You go first with your plus three. (laughs) I, I, I I bow down to your... Superiority and I don't even know what calling half the people are playing, so I'm very excited to see what happens once we start fighting. Okay, okay. so I guess... uh, Zach, sorry, what'd you get? Um, I got a 17. 17, that's right. Okay, cool. Uh, no, Eddie, you got an 18 or 17? 17. 17, that's what I thought. All right, cool. And that means that the... Cool! So, Amber, you are first. What do you do as this thing swoops down? Uh, I am going to try to hit with, I think I'm going to go ahead and pull out the big boys immediately. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, oh, you know what? I'm going to pull out my short bow and I'm going to try to kind of. Okay. Pop shot it, I guess. This is 17 hit. Does a 17 hit? It does. Oh, good. So that is... Ooh. Seven damage. Nice. Dig it. Wonderful. So it swoops down and it's circling above and it looks like it's about to make an attack and then you plug it and it like shoots an arrow through it and it tears through one of its wings. Devin, it's your turn. I will uh, follow a suit with that, take out my longbow, and shoot at it, and, uh, oh, that's a nat 20. Oh, wow, nice. All right, cool. <laughs> Hold on. So, that is 8 plus, that is 14 damage. That's a lot of damage. doing anything. Uh, yeah, you would double that, I think. Um, so, that is 28 damage. <laughs> is it really? Wait, you got 14 damage off of a roll? Wow. I, I just did two max rolls. I, I that, would usually say Jesus Christ, but considering that we are playing squeaks, I'm going to say cheese and crackers. <laughs> That's appropriate. I said uh, Jesus a lot during our last game. Jesus. You did. It was kind of awesome. Um, that, uh, yeah, Devin, those aren't your dice. You should give those dice back to whoever they belong to. No, us. no. They're, <laughs> they're physical clicky clacks. That's why they work. <laughs> All right, awesome. cool. Um, since you did just F this thing up, it's going to come straight for you and try oh, to attack yeah. you. Um, does a high twenties hit you? Yeah. Yeah. 
cool, cool, cool. If it doesn't, I have some serious questions. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't, I would remind Sean he made this character. <laughs> that is true. I did. I forgot about Wow, do I really roll four of those? Ouch. Um, you know, bad sign when your GM says ouch. So this thing swoops down and it gores you with 17 piercing damage. Um, oh, yeah. Ow. <laughs> Ow. And give me a, an opposed strength roll. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, this part. I forgot. Oh, yeah. And, uh... Oh, that's a 19. That's a 19. Cool. Um, it got 21. So, um, I'm still parried away. Okay. <laughs> yes. It scoops you up in its talons and its beak. And, um... Or, I guess it would be not talent... Or, Bat talons, sure, uh, and it's it talons and it's squeak. Yes, it's talons and it's squeak. There you go. Scoops you up, takes you up a few feet, and you can already feel it starting to like loosen its grip on you as it hopes to drop you. Um, excellent, Eddie. It's your turn. Oh jeez. Um. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. How does this bat creature look like it's? Hurts badly? Is it, you know, confident in taking away my comrade? Uh, it seems to be, yes. Um, but it, it doesn't, it, you can definitely tell there's like drips of goo coming out of it. It's not flying. It's, it's sort of struggling to keep him up and fly with him. It didn't get too high off the ground with him. Is Stradio within, can I grab his leg? I would give you a really great athletics, or no, uh, traverse check to see okay. if you could grab him. Well, I don't have traverse, so I'll just try straight up dex. See how that goes. All right. Fifteen? Fifteen. You grab onto his legs, um, which then, between your weight and his weight, you pull it down. So, like, you're on your tippy toes, like, as this thing's sort of dragging the both of you around. And um, you feel like if it was going to try to drop him, but when it does, it's not going to hurt him. So you've actually nullified its next its next. Effect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This happened to me way too many times before. <laughs> Excellent. Please don't get acquired next time. <laughs> Zach, it's your turn. Um, so because they're hanging on him on mm -hmm. this thing, is it low enough from the ground that I can smack it? Yeah, you can actually just yeah. give a short jump and you can smack it. It's within reach. I'm going to smack it with my flail. <laughs> no, I'm not going to smack it with my flail. <laughs> <laughs> what was um, your total? Seven. Oh, yeah, no. You were halfway there. <clears throat> Living on a prayer. Yeah. There it is. There it is. You, you're, I was waiting. You, you kind of leap up and you you swipe and it just like dodges out of the right way real fast. And Dixie, it's your turn. What's I'm going. Uh, the snake's going to Eldritch Blast it. Oh, nice. Because that's the basic spell that everybody uses forever. I rolled a one. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I, 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 I... <laughs> I am I am sorry, but I'm also glad that somebody rolled lower than me. So I am pleased that Jess just completely failed. Like Jess is supposed to be a little hapless. You have dishonored so this your hat. Is perfect. <laughs> so what happens is Jess like balls up the energy in their hands and then they throw it out. And... I like have a book out. I'm like trying to like read it. <laughs> yeah, and you're like yeah, and then it causes the creature to sort of veer very sharply which then it it in the action it lets go of um stradeo, stradeo and um basil. <laughs> is this like stradeo or stradeo Strade i like stradeo that's good stra but, stra stradeo which then it flings them off into the water so now they're in like several feet of water um that that's what that's what happens for rolling a one um yeah. I helped! <laughs> Woohoo! Wouldn't you rather be wet than airbound? Yes! Yes! Okay, so much good. yes, thank you. It, the water you're in is like very brackish, it's very salty, but briny. It's like 
it's like the mix of seawater waterfall and the natural spring springing up from the bottom, just mixing and forming this unpleasant it water. It stings. Yeah, it would sting your wounds too, but we're not going to get that detailed. Uh, Amber, it's your turn. Oh, goody. Um, just for clarification, um, mm -hmm. how far away is this fatty coda away from us? Uh, it's not that far. Still All within right. range of your weapons and everything. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pop shot it again. Okay. I am not going to go ahead and pot shot it again. I am going to look at it with my bow and be like, you. And that's probably about as much as I'm going to be able to get out of it with a uh, 12. Uh, yeah, not quite. Close. Um, it, it like howls at you and hisses and starts to dive your way. Uh, Devin, your Stradio, your Stradeo. I like that. You're in a deep pool of water at the moment. What do you do? I, I can't stand up in the water then, I presume. Uh, not at the moment, no. Okay, I get to a location where it's more towards the edge where I can stand up. <laughs> okay, so now you're like up to your lower waist in water. I don't care. It needs to die already. And I take a shot. Okay. And definitely don't hit. That's a oh. four. Man, you were doing so well. You were doing well, so well. Well, uh, everything was downhill from a nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <clears throat> it comes flying back at Jesk and um hmm. Does a does a 13 hit you? Hang on. Uh yes. It does. Wow. I have very little defense. I have 11 defense. 12, I'm not supposed to get hit. 14. They're supposed to get hit. <laughs> well, I stand in the background and hurl spells. Uh, yeah. Uh, take 14 damage as this thing scoops up, uh, claws into you, and then it attempts to scoop you up. It doesn't scoop you up. <clears throat> Yay. It actually fumbles and falls on the ground as it tries to scoop you up. <clears throat> kind of hisses at you. Um, Eddie, you're in a pool of water. What do you do? I just hiss back at it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to reach out towards McSqueaks. Um, uh, my eyes are going to glow briefly. And as I touch my paw onto him and McSqueaks gets back uh, seven stamina points as hmm. his wounds start to close my Ooh. powers. Ooh, this, this feels much better than the salt. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Nice move. Uh, Zach, it's on the ground. What do you do? Um, if it's on the ground, I, I can run up and uh, hit it with my flail. Maybe actually connect this time. Okay. Let's see what happens. That uh, 21 connects. That, that hits. Smash okay. it. And for people who have very little experience with uh, OGL-based games, so I roll my damage dice, and then do I add anything to that? So you should be adding your strength uh, bonus to that. Okay. Then that's nine damage. Nine damage. You go, and you just swing your flail up, flail up and bring it down real hard, right on its skull, and you just hear a thunk, and it, it's not moving anymore. Right. Kind of look at it for a moment. It's got uh, like these barb. It looks kind of baddish. Um, it, it's uh, like got very, very sleek skin. Has these two barbed horns on its head. They kind of move independently of of the creature itself. Do I know what it is with no arcana? Can I roll? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I would also like to roll no arcana. Oh, oh, now I roll a 20 fucking five. All right. <laughs> oh, never mind. Snake's got it. Uh, it's a canoptic. Okay. Any more information about that besides just the name? Uh, it, yeah, it's most common tactic is to hook it, hook its prey with its horns and fly up to the top of cavern and drop it. And it just likes to pulverize it, pulverize its meals. So it doesn't um, have any like useful venom or anything? Uh, if you wanted to try to get something out of it, like some bones or weird organs or a gizzard or something, I'd allow it. 
I just do you're, potions mostly. So yeah, venom was really all I was looking for. Okay. No, no venom here. Okay. Does it lay eggs? <laughs> sure. I'm going to look for its eggs. Are, are you a little wow. right now? <laughs> no, I need them for later. I don't know how long we're going to be down here. You'd be a while. You do uh, find a small nest up in a ridge on the cavern, I'll say your spider stuff's still working, and you just kind of like slink up and you look and you're like, ooh, eggs. I just put them in a little like cotton lined <clears throat> parcel I have. Nice. I dig Des, it. Are you are you sure you want to risk eating these? I mean, I don't know if you can get botulism from from that hook thing eggs, but I'm just happy that someone's eating the eggs and How do you getting botulism? rid of these things. That's kind of what I was thinking, was I could just eat them and then there wouldn't be any more in the future. Before you inadvertently poison yourself, can I at least momentarily try to heal your current wounds? Sure. Are you going to go all glowy again? Yes. I love it when you glow glowy. Uh, have uh, 11 stamina points back. Ooh. That's close to my max. Thank you. Nice. I have very little stamina, so I was really <laughs> concerned when I got hit for 14. I was like, that's over half my health. It's a handy spell. <clears throat> yes, it's a spell. Totally. So. <laughs> <laughs> is, anybody um, else, is everybody else, like, all noticeably healed, or is anybody still looking injured-like? I'm two-thirds the way to healed. All right. On a scale of 1 to 18, I'm 18. I can give you a sip out of one of my health flasks. I hand I I, I hand you a little vial. You know, I say take a sip, not all of it. Do it. it tastes I, like honey. I, I take a sip. Tastes like honey. It tastes like honey. And you regain one stamina die, so you can roll a stamina die, of whatever your stamina die is. Oh, sweet. It's the eight, and that is a five. Spend it. Awesome. Or is it? Do what? Does it have to spend it, or is it just... It's just as one stamina die. Okay. Worth of help. I'd have okay. to go get pirates again. <laughs> Fair enough. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah, you look around, and you never got to investigate the tomb, but then you also notice that the, wa the large pool sort of spills off into a, a smaller waterfall that then turns into a creek that goes deeper into the cavern. <clears throat> I, guess I do want continue. to kind of just uh, do a quick search of the area before we kind of head out. Yeah, we didn't really search the tomb yet. We just yeah. started, like, walking toward the tomb, and then a bat attacked us. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I'll go over and, and search the tomb. Mm -hmm. Search the tomb. Uh, there's not much to search from it. It's a lot of broken marble stones, pillars, finely crafted statues that are just broken into several pieces at this point. Um whatever was inside of this tomb, it was, you know, kind of a nice sort of crypt, um, fairly good size, but there appears to be nothing left inside of it. Specifically, is there any like indication of where anything that might have, which way they would have gone with it? Uh, that you can do an actual search roll for. Okay. Got it. Big money, big money, big money. Okay. And then, search is wisdom right wisdom yep so add your okay. wisdom score plus your so that's proficiency bonus oh plus my proficiency bonus so that's a yep. if you had a search skill yep and that makes it 13 oh total 13 okay <clears throat> amber were you rolling as well to help uh yeah i could totally do that okay cool go ahead uh choo -choo -choo -choo. I am just going to stand there and be like, you are so pretty. You are so good at this. <laughs> Everyone needs a cheerleader because they certainly don't need me helping them right now. Nice. My so, again, Zach, I can't remember. How do you pronounce it again? Sonoran. Sonoran. I need to spell that out. Like the desert. So, Sonoran's looking around and you don't you don't search good enough to um, sort of discern anything specific, but you do see a lot of footpads 
um, there in the grounds. And you can definitely tell, like, and you're looking at the um, uh, the tomb itself. It does look like it was carefully brought down in one piece and then just smashed here, uh, smashed open. And then you can see a large group of feet moving further down the cavern, following along that stream. Hey, I think they went that way. Good. Well, smoke them if you got them. <laughs> Go. Not, in fact, have them. Good. Filthy habit it is. It's terrible to do in caves, too. And, uh, yeah, we can break for a few moments if you need to. We'll do that. Uh, we'll be back in about five, ten minutes for more awesome Pugmire adventure.
Hello, and welcome back. We are playing Squeaks in the Deep here on Ox Path. Uh, our harrowing rodents and snakes. Everybody's a rat, aren't they? Or a mouse? Do we have any rats? Me? I'm a rat. You're a rat. That's right. One rat, three mice, and a snake. Nice. What kind of bar? <clears throat> and then whatever he ends up being. Uh, I think he's a mouse, too. Yeah. Cool. Um, a mouse. Duh. I, f I forget my train of thought. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Obviously a mouse. Anyway, uh, you had just defeated a giant horned bat creature, and now you're staring down a very dark cavern lit uh, greatly by the torch that you have. So, yeah. Who's going to go in front? It shouldn't be me. Who's our. Definitely not. It should definitely not be me. I'll go Sonoran? in front. I feel like Sonoran's a front kind of rat. <clears throat> Sneaky. If I go, if I go first, that we that we make sure that everybody can fit through any passages we come through. <clears throat> I will hand uh, Sonora in the torch that I that I lit earlier. Cool, <clears throat> Sonora, you're walking down this passageway, and there the creek bed uh, has cut in over many years into uh, the side wall. And uh, there's like a smooth bottom. There's a definite definition of um, sort of rocky shoreline there. Um, and you yourself are walking along this uh, cavern. And give me a traverse check real quick. So I do not have traverse. So I just. You just roll constitution yep. plus a roll. Uh, so that would be 13. 13. You realize, and it doesn't quite click why this might be, but you realize it's the, 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 f the ground feels very polished, very removed of any sort of rough spots or anything like that. Like it's, um, since you're in front, you're the first to notice this and you're a bit of a distance in now with the rest of you and you realize, yeah, this is, um, it's very slick. And you think maybe the water spills over every once in a while and sort of grinds out the rough spots? Maybe? Surely? Do you mention this to any of your comrades? So it's it's like smooth. It's very, very slipper, smooth. But not slippery. Yeah, like you were able to catch yourself and you, you realize you have to sort of change your step a little bit to prevent from slipping, but it's not actively slippery. Like, intentionally slippery, let me put it that way. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to kind of turn over my shoulder and be like, uh, watch your footing. Uh, it's kind of, uh, I don't think it's wet, but it could be slippery when it's wet. Um, not a lot to grip onto here, so. Hitting all the album hits tonight. Just, what just I can. like, it slithers up a little bit to where it starts and kind of, like, touches it with a finger. Okay. One of um, his paws. Uh, do you have, like... Do you have any, um, uh, what are they called? Uh, why can't I think of them? Knowledges? Uh, just history and arcana, not nature. Uh, I let arcana happen for this one. Okay. Be a little more difficult. Well, I rolled a 24. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I rolled an 18 and I have a plus six of that, so. You're pretty far in, um, to this passageway and... Uh, Sonoran mentions the slipperiness. You're kind of running your fingers along the sidewalls, and they're smooth too. And you start to look around, and you realize the water, unless the water constantly fills this cavern, there's no way that it would get like this slippery um, or this like smooth and polished. And it gives you pause, and you stop for a moment. You're like, something's not right, something's not good. Hmm. If if water did this, then it would it would be smoother on the bottom because it would fill and then go back unless it all came at once, like a like out of a, a pressurized something that doesn't exist. So I don't know what made this, and I don't like it. We should leave. Just just so abandon abandon our now? mission. No, I mean like get through this as quickly as possible. <clears throat> 
But what if there's a large thing at the other end that made this hole? I got a shield. <laughs> if it's large enough thing. to make this hole, I'm worried about it. Our alternatives are abandon our mission or get through as quickly as possible to make sure nothing behind us is the thing that created this. Maybe I should go first and be quiet about it to see if there's anything up there. I can you do are that. inclined to be killed very quickly based on my past experience with you. But I'm also inclined to be very sneaky. Remember, I'm a sneaky snake. I'm also a sneaky mouse. And I have dark vision, so I, I don't would... need a torch. If perhaps at least one of our colleagues who are also sneaky could go with you, just in case something bad happens. Do you want to go up ahead with Maestro Deo? Sure. We won't have a torch. Okay, just tell me if there's any bats. I'll go bat! And then I'll go duck. I was drinking! <laughs> I named my character after what we do in the shadows reference. Do you think I wasn't going to go bat at some point? Yeah. I also, I named my mouse Laszlo. Come on. Yeah, I have fair. a that's theme fair. here. Uh -oh. All right. <clears throat> so I actually get advantage on sneak checks. Okay, go ahead and roll it. As Both you I. roll. And I get an extra thing for traverse as well. Okay, cool. We'll do sneaks since you're you're cautiously moving. I'm saying I can sneak and traverse. All right. Oh. Uh, six on the sneak. I got a 19. Got a 19. The two of you, um, like one takes one side, one takes the other, and you're cautiously moving forward. Um, you're, you're definitely, all of you are moving slower through here. You extinguish the torch just as a safety measure, and um, you're all kind of following along the wall. And um, Jesk and Stradeo, you pause for a moment as you realize there's like a weird ripple in the water um and you feel like the like the creek that's next to us yeah the creek in, that's okay. next to you and you also feel like there was like a breeze or the air in front of you felt you know normal but now it doesn't you can actually feel like there's something almost blocking the passage and i'm gonna of you. cast detect magic detect magic mm, okay with a 30 foot range. I'm just going to keep moving forward faster now yeah. to see what's at the end. I can see the presence okay. of magic, the unseen, and characters under unseen influence within 30 feet. Uh, yeah, go ahead and. And I, and I can keep that on as I move for up to 10 minutes. Okay. So, two things happen. <clears throat> you cast that, and your eyes sort of glow and glitter now as you can see different patterns in the walls and everything. And you do start to notice there is definitely something in front of you um, creating like a barrier. You're not sure what, but Stradeo, you um, you said that you move faster. I need you to give me a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Oh. I can see Jess like concentrating, like, like tried to grab him and just didn't didn't happen because Jusk is not very <laughs> strong or dexterous. So Stradeo is like, I'm moving faster to get through this weird uh, sense. And you catch yourself as you bump, you slowly bump or you quickly bump into thing. You kind of bounce off something. And then these little tendrils kind of reach out at you. And you're just like, what? No, get away. And you, you back off. And then that's when you, and that's when Jess can actually see what they thought was a barrier now is actually just sort of a ripple of a gelatin like substance that's starting to come up the passageway. Do I recognize what it is? It's polyhydra. Polyhydra. It's basically a gelatinous cube that's filled yeah. the entire. Yeah. It's a gelatinous uh, platonic solid. Thank you. It's a gelatinous <laughs> sphere. Because it's in a round. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, does Tradeo look like he's okay for right now? He looks like he's fine. He's backed away, but it's it's starting to move its way up the passageway. And how far are we from the others? Uh, just enough distance where you thought you, you'd be safe. Um, sort of scouting ahead. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to backtrack to them then. 
like grab grab Tradeo by the collar, just like not haul safe, him, not safe. Haul him back up to where everybody is. <clears throat> okay. Okay. How was it? There's a polyhydra blocking the way. One of those big jelly dudes. Oh. It tried to eat me. No, it tried to grab you. It would eat you later. They they digest very slowly. It would take a, a while, is what I'm saying. But it it's, still, it's still tried to eat me. Yes, but it would have taken. A, I, I could have pulled you out. The point is, we should probably uh, kill it. Can we get around it? No. No. Literally, the the reason that this is like it is. It's, okay. Um, are you aware of any method to destroy such a creature? Am I aware of that? Mm, yeah, sure. You you rolled a hide enough for can. I will say, what yeah. Is, what 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 is the way to do that? You have to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you can you can so you, you can kill it with regular weapons and spells. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yes, yes, it's pretty easily. Okay. Hey, we just we just kill it. It's it's not they're not very fast. Just don't don't get too close to it. I that I. We'll definitely not do. All right, cool. Well. We can kill it. Here, and I, 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 I relight Sonoran's torch. Okay. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna head towards it, and uh, is it until I get within, uh, I believe, sixty feet is what I want to, about where I want to get. Uh, <clears throat> um, you can get up next to it, but then also remember that it can try to grab you, so. Uh, a ranged attack, sixty feet, sure. If that's what you're gonna do. That's that's uh, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm gonna get up to it and attack it, cause cause the snake said to kill it. So. Okay. Everybody, give me really quick initiative rolls, but Zach will go first. This round. Eleven. Fourteen. Eleven. Teen. You said 11? Eddie has said 11. Mm -mm. What'd you say, Amber? 15. 15? What'd you get, um... Dixie? 12. 12. Was here. Cool. Uh, Zach, you have first action this round. What'd you do? I am going to use Mental Ray on it. Oh, nice. Does it have a brain? We'll find out. Can you mentally ray it? <clears throat> I, I, I don't know. Uh, but if my math is correct, that's a 15. That hits. Okay. You can mentally ray them. <laughs> Mental ray and its brother, Bubba Ray. And, and the damage is eight. Eight. Nice. <clears throat> and so as the ray comes out and it, there's kind of a gray trail of weaving through and there's little like metallic tat 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 sound that Ooh. comes when he uses his sciatic ability nice creepy um yeah you meant you like this beam shoots out from you and hit and ripples against its side i'm um, kind of and you can see it sort of arc inside inside of it and uh yeah you definitely did some damage to it um amber you are next i am assuming um using anything electricity right now would probably not be in anybody's best <clears throat> um unless you were standing in the water it should be okay yeah i mean we're not wet mm, okay but you know it's a melee. i was going to do you know what? I'm going to try mental. I also have mental ray, so I think I'm going to do that instead. My electricity um, is a melee, and I think I want to try to stay as far away from this thing as, I, as possible at the moment. Okay. So let's roll that. Uh, this is the second d20 of the night that has failed me. Um, mm. I am going Sorry, to I picked post my up. coffee at the end of this. Please buy me new dice. Um, <laughs> these are all just trash. I got big two. It, it wow. It you mentally ray and like you're thinking real hard and it just kind of shoots straight out the top of your head and dissipates against the the cavern ceiling. <clears throat> and it's going to move in and try to 
engulf you, Zach. Give me a dexterity save. Uh -oh. It moves 60 feet in one turn. It's very fast uh, oh, for my bad. Solid. No, it can't. It gets real close. It gets okay. real close, Zach. Okay. <laughs> Like that's that's the fastest he was alive. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it was. Or yeah, mm, oh, it could move twice, maybe. No, even then, no, mm, no, I'm not gonna be that mean. Yeah, it moves slowly up the cavern. I think it's gonna get you. <clears throat> I drive its fastest foods on that one. Uh, and Dixie, it's your turn. Oh shit! Um, I was singing the Sonic the Hedgehog theme song from the nineties. <laughs> um, like you do. Which I only know because of my boyfriend. I've never watched that show. Uh. Right now, I will do another. I will. I will try Eldritch Blast again because just just feels bad about last time. So he's like, "All right, okay, you can do this, Jusk. You trained for this. <laughs> this is what everybody's coming on you to do." And seventeen. Nice, that hits. What's Yay! <laughs> uh, one D ten, and it's force damage. If that means anything. Uh, okay. Hey, cool! I rolled a ten. Nice, really? Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Yay. Um Yeah, the Eldritch Ballast, like you can see it just ripple across its skin and it you can kind of see like the 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 in pieces of it, the jelly just starts to melt and acid away. Mm. That's what I meant to do earlier to the bat, everybody. I'm sorry. <laughs> Stradio. Stradio is going to I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Stradeo. Stradeo is going to uh... <clears throat> Attack at range because he's already been too close to that thing. Okay. And <clears throat> there's a 19. Yes, that hits. Okay. That hits for 10 damage. Ooh, nice. Wow. So much 10 damage. <clears throat> Excellent. Um, Eddie. Uh, how. Given my ability to determine damage on a gelatinous creature, how badly mm -hmm. damaged does it look? Uh, it's looking pretty messed up as it's like it's it's outside is sort of dripping and you can see it's more ripply. It's not as it's very easily discernible now. It wasn't as clear and smooth as it was before. Hmm. My friends are still pretty hurt. I don't entirely trust that my bow is going to be effective. So uh, I'm Basil's eyes glow even brighter than normal. Um, he puts his paw out, turns blue, and three bolts of hydrothermic blast come out. Oh, nice. Uh, so I rolled a natural 20, a natural one, and a six. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, it's dead with okay. whatever damage you're rolling. Yeah. Um, <laughs> those bolts just fly out. and uh, Were they burning hydrothermic? That's, cold. Um, cold. Cold damage. You can actually see it like hit in like it's you can see like the ice crystals sort of grow inside of it and peel it apart and then it it the whole thing frosts over and then shatters apart as it hits the ground and then it it slowly melts away and it's carried off by the river the creek <clears throat> and you're pretty sure your way is clear at this point <clears throat> so, you have made a path so this was a giant like just blubbery we could see through it kind of jelly or yeah. yeah was there anything in it or no it was completely smooth and clear okay so it hadn't eat, so it didn't eat the guy okay that's good to know actually no it did no not bones. eat anyone all right no bones about it good good <laughs> uh, so we keep going sure if you want to it's not like there's two of these things right <laughs> Should I check for another one? <laughs> sure, if you want to. <laughs> Should I go ahead again? Actually, actually, before you do that, um, uh, I have a basic power called smell life. Um, I mm -hmm. can smell a single species of a living organism in a radius of 60 feet, so I can smell for this thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, the only life that you're smelling is like maybe a random frog in the creek. They're, they're, we're not in immediate uh, danger of being attacked. So yes, no, as ahead. far as you can tell, you're you're pretty darn safe now. Okay. okay. In that case, Zorin, lead the way. All right. I, I'm still gonna 
carry my shield after that thing and came up. So I'm kind of leading with my shield. Okay. The torch in one hand and looking over the edge of it. This narrow cave gives way to a much larger cavern eventually. And the creek seems to go into the rocks itself and disappears for the moment. Um, you're in a very large cavern. Um, the, the walls and the rocks seem very natural. And um, you're walking for a ways and it gets bigger and bigger. And then you can start to notice there's like white pillars in the side of the cave, you want to say? You're not sure? These look like they were made by Paul. Mm -mm. You look at it. And Jask, if you want to get closer and take an examination of it, you actually realize that it's like... Magnifying glass. You look at it and you're like, oh no, this is a fossilized bone and it's huge. You can you kind of do the magnifying glass up and then you can see that it's just this giant... You, you look to be in, like, a giant rib cage. That's a bone. Wait. Jessica licks it. <laughs> That's a valid tool in archaeology. To think if, if, if I think it's a bone or not. It's it pretty tasty. Is. It's a it's a tasty bone. But it's, it's definitely a bone. It's definitely a bone. This is a bone. That is quite a... Sizable. It's a big bone. It, yeah. Big bone. I am just going I cannot lie. to go ahead and say it, and whatever they're paying us is not enough. I bet this creature's skull would make an excellent tent. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. Or a house, maybe even a condo at this point. What is a condo? Um, Basil is going to start examining the... Like, there's the bone, and then there's a rib cage. Can he see that? Is, is there a whole skeleton here? Is it just chunks of skeleton? What kind of creatures look like? He's just now intensely curious about this. So you look, and, like, you you hold the torch up high, and somebody does some magic, and it kind of gets a little bit brighter as well. Um, and, yeah, you can actually tell, yes, this, this is a giant sort of fossilized bone. Um, and then there's another further uh, down, just a little bit bigger, and you can actually tell, yeah, it's a it's a rib cage. It's it's getting bigger as it goes down the way. And as you're examining this, you think you see like, are those eyes deeper down? No, they can't be eyes. That'd be weird. Hmm. Uh, I just want to kind of generally look around with notice. <clears throat> notice. Yeah. Go ahead and roll it. I'm I'm also going to roll notice. Go ahead. Yeah. Is that a wis is that an int or yeah, wait, wisdom. A, wisdom? Wisdom. Wisdom. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Ain't it better. Rider. Uh, I rolled twenty, not natural. Twenty. Okay. Good. Eighteen. Eighteen. I did not good. roll that well. Uh, I got a, a twelve. Okay. You're like, ooh, that's a pretty rock on the ground. Those of you who rolled high, though, um, you are you're starting to like. Basil was looking and interested, and so the rest of you sort of start looking around. And yeah, you can definitely tell at the top of these bones, there are two blinking, glowing eyes. Um, lots of them, actually, and they start to appear, and you can sort of hear the skittering off in the distance. <clears throat> Wait, like... Not, not spider skittering. No, Just... no, like, like more bats? No, no bat skittering. Or like rodents? Okay, okay. Like... Not not rodents, us or them. Rodents, squeakers, like little non non sapient rodents. Not unenlightened, unenlightened, unlifted. Well, to answer your question, suddenly at the far end, there's this burst of light, and these torches light up inside these two huge eyes of a skull, and it's just this giant maw with these teeth, and then at the top of it is this lizard in like really tattered but brightly colored rags in like this weird sort of hat on top of its head and he goes welcome to the court of the white salamander hello Can you look friend. at jesk <laughs> i um jesk in the way of lizards uh, scoops a handful of salt out and puts it in a very small bowl out of one of his packs and he says greetings stranger Will you share salt with us? Kind of looks around. 
leans down off the skull, whispers to somebody, and she's like, We are unaware of this custom. They didn't grow up in the lizard families. Oh. It means we're friends. Hmm. Kind of waves over, and you see this very pale, very white um, uh, lizard comes scurrying out. Kind of looks at you, very weird. And very, its eyes are just like blinking rapidly at you, and it just kind of looks at the salt. What do you do with it? You, you eat some, and then I eat some, and then it shows that we're friends and we trust each other. Are they all geckos, or are there any serpents or turtles among them? Uh, they're all geckos. Okay. Kind of dips the tip and. Yeah, dude. And then I eat them. And now we will he, not do each other harm because we are he, friends. And he scurries away really fast. And then the tall one at the top of the lizard skull is just like, kind of looks, converses with him really quickly and looks at him and he's just, Excellent! We are friends now. We are, I guess, according to your custom. We are honored by your coming. For it was foretold that no mortal would enter the court of the white salamander for eight billion years. And now you have come, and we are honored. Has it been eight billion years? I have only been alive for a few years, so I do not know how many eight billion years it's. Eight billion! I feel Don't like there are eight billion grains eight of sand in the is. desert. Anyway, what, what two? Mr. I don't know what 8 billion is. It, it is a very large number. And implausibly large number. A, a ludicrously implausibly large number. It's got nine O's. <clears throat> Ooh. Yes, like like that. So it's nine billion. <laughs> sure. To commemorate your coming, you shall impale yourself on the bones of fish. I would like to re-examine our friendship at this point. What kind of how, fish? How big are these fish? Yeah. If you mean uh, impale ourselves. <laughs> you, you, you can see now there's like some other geckos that have like these really large, narrow bones that they've come out with. And they don't seem threatening about it. They, You're almost like, do they really expect us to just impale ourselves on this? Like willingly? Like what? Yes! Impale yourself on bones of fish, and we will remember you for forever. And then what happens after we impale ourselves? What is the next step? Uh, we... What is the prophecy that is being fulfilled? The prophecy is you impale yourselves on the bones of fish, and, and, and then, then what happens? And then... Kind of leans down to one. We don't know. Nobody's ever asked that part. Basil, investigate. I don't. I don't mean to disparage your your religious beliefs, but it seems like there may be some gaps in your scripture that you may wish to have a theologian examine it more depth. Um, well, for for example, uh, you mentioned that you would remember us forever. However, unless. Mm -hmm. You have some fascinating abilities available to you. Uh, you will die at some point and therefore forget us, which means you will not be able to fulfill your promise. And that is an unfortunate side effect of mortality. Pillars. Right. Um, and also, 8 billion um, is, is an extremely long time. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it, is, it is is longer than even the great ones have been around. So. Um, when you say impale, was there any kind of documentation about what that exactly entails, or is it more of a word of mouth thing? What's that? While you're considering that, we're going to go uh, on ahead, and then you can let us know when no, you wait, figure it out. No, wait! Wait! We must figure this out. Okay. All right. Do not move, or else uh, we will impale you on the bones of fish. I thought the prophecy was that we had to impale, impale ourselves. Impale ourselves. Okay. Yeah, it's a little weird. Well, look. How about this? Why don't you, hand, why don't you give us the bones while you, while you talk about it, and then we can discuss amongst ourselves how we may consider impaling ourselves. But we can't, if we do that through ourselves, we have to have bones in our hands, correct? We've got to and figure am, out the logistics of impaling I am using ourselves. Persuade to convince these guys to give us the bones. <laughs> okay, go ahead and roll. Uh, 20. 
Well, he makes sound logic, so I guess they'll impale each other. Hand them the bones, they'll impale each other, and then they will we'll, impale ourselves. Right. You'll sure, and then we'll figure out the rest. You see, somebody wrote this down, okay. and then they were testing it, and then they impaled themselves, and I don't think they finished it. So, um, I, can see, I, can, I already see the flaw in, right. in your logic here. Yeah. All right. So, oh, give us the bones. Yeah, yeah, give them the bones, give them the bones, yeah. give them to them, yeah. give them. Yeah, yeah. And they, they, they kind of gingerly hand, hand you the bones. Thank you. I've got a bone now. So now that we have their weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of tapping the, tip, the point of the bone that I have. I'm like, is, is it, it like, sharp? How sharp is this? Like, it would be what, you know how when like, you get a dull knife and it, it, it sort of like, slowly pokes through something that it should easily poke through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It would be that experience of you impaling yourself on it. So it's like, what's a spoon? <laughs> yeah. Can, with, why? Because it hurts more. Yeah. The, not intentionally with a spoon, but like just, you know, they didn't sharpen in the end. How, so. how thick are these bones? Pretty thick. You know. What kind of fish okay. did you get these bones from? They're oh, very large. Well, they come from the lake further on. The Great Lake! There's a Great Lake? Yes. Full of fish with bones this large? So well, they were. Um, we kind of you, hunted you, them to extinction. Unfortunately. Oh, okay. So, you, and then you the said we're came. the first... Wait. Wait, wait, wait you, said we were, you said we were the only ones here. The first ones here in, in eight, bu- 8 billion? Is that the right word? Is that right? Yes, 8 billion. 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 Okay. Yes. But, but so you just said that then the rats came? Are you talking about us, or were there other rats? Well, there was other... I mean, there were... They came... Did they like, impale themselves? No, we we had an agreement with them. Um, Can we make an agreement with you? I, I'm a I'm a rat. I'm one of those rats. Uh, uh, they're you're, my great, great, great. You're one of those rats. I don't know what kind of rat you're saying, but if it'll work to not impale myself, then yes. No, no. You'll commemorate your coming with the impaling on the fish, because you 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 came. You're new. Okay. Do all so, of us have to um, impale ourselves, or can one representative impale ourselves? No, I think. Alternatively, do we have to impale ourselves now? I don't feel like that there was a specified time in that. Also, you just said impale ourselves on a fish, but this is only part of a fish. Yes. Well, you know, also a valid fish point. on which to impale myself. The bones I have to impale of... myself on a fish. You know what? We're distracted through your research. Why don't you go back and, and reassess your, 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 your scripture or your, your methodology or, or what have you? Um, we'll wait here with, with the bones and we'll. Discuss amongst yourselves. What if we press on ahead with the bones and come back later when they're done? Tell you what, no, wait. (laughs) Those are the sacramental bones. Those cannot leave. If you if you promise to stay with us forever, because they're going to. No, you can just set them over there. If you promise to come back, of course. And we'll work that. We'll we'll write some more. We'll we'll test in some impalings, and then when you come back, we'll we'll deal with this. I look forward to reading I'm your paper just, on the subject. Okay. I'm just uh, saying, it's one of the the prophesies. I am not uh, impressed with your note taking. You've had eight billion years to to get this. I mean, eight again, I, I, I hate to be judgmental, but your methodology is certainly uh, undocumented, at least. It's so, not so, so uh, I'm I'm more interested in uh, where did those other rats go? You said you had to deal with them. Oh, he kind How of many billions down of years ago was that? And walks over to you. Like, I'm going to say it, three. It was like three billion years. Anyway, hi, I'm Litrix. Um. Uh, th- uh, How? We're barely holding together down here, so you what know. What do you I'm eat? Shocked. How old are you? Uh, fourteen billion. Okay. Wait, how much time has passed since we got here? Three billion. <sighs> Don't. <laughs> do you know what the word billion means? I yes. It means. What does it mean? Increment of time. I think it means two minutes. So, what's so, a minute? So no. then, anyway, you're trying to confuse me, and it's very inappropriate. So within within but, a couple of sleeps, then, if if, if you saw the other rats, oh, it's only been a couple of sleeps. Right, it's been like four, four sleeps. Four sleeps. Four sleeps. Did, How many okay. sleeps is eight billion sleeps? Twelve. I don't know. 12? So, no. how many was it? Six, 16? No, that doesn't sound right. Do you know how no. to count? 
How long have you been down here? Your 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 people, not just you. Oh, oh. forever. For like two billion. What? Two billion? That's less time than eight billion. No, it's not. So, so, um, how, you said there were rats four sleeps to go. How many rats were there? Uh, there was, well, there, there was six of them, right? Were 22, they that doesn't sound I was, right. I, I, I don't think that their number count will be very there was, helpful. There was 14 feet amongst them. How okay. many? And how, how many, many fingers am I holding? <laughs> Nine. <laughs> I so, don't think they understand numbers at all. So, how many so of us are there? Twenty. Do you are are these feet? <laughs> no, those are of course hands. What do I look no, like, an idiot? These are, these are paws. I don't know where you got that word from. It's a made up word. Oh, so. Paws. I, I, if I had a black apple we're... and I took three away, how many apples are there? If a train Look. leaves Chicago at 12 o'clock. <laughs> what is a train and what is Chicago? At what is a Chicago? It's a very fun word. I knew it. I knew a it dog named tasty. Chicago. All right, look. If you want to go <laughs> through, you can go through. Just promise to come back. We'll figure out the religious, yeah, no. the more religious rights. Just, Literally, just... we all have some thinking to do. Right. The rats that you saw, were they carrying anything? Like yes. a dead rat? Or a dead dog? A dead dog. No, they were carrying a box. Was, it, long, was it full of a dead dog? Very, I don't know. I didn't open it. Why not? What do I look? Inconsiderate? I don't go rummage around in other people's stuffs. You dressed in pale people. That is very kind of no, you. No, no. They ask people to pale themselves to be pure. Yes. We it's don't true. do it. You do it. It's, he's you know. a very he's very polite. Oh, wait, I... wait. What does impale mean to you? To stab you with the fish bones. Okay, so you at least know that word. That's, they they that's know verbs, word. they don't know numbers. We, I think we've established this. <laughs> anyway, if you come back, we'll deal with this whole thing, and then we'll do the salt thing that seems more considerate, whatever. Sure. Okay, well. What? Wait, wait, well, wait, 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 wait. What if we put the salt on the bone and then impaled you with it? Let's, let's put a pin in that. I'm not sure if that McStabber works. Why would we put in the bones? Salt is about hospitality, and impaling is not. Oh. I, I think I think we I think we safe to say that most every culture would find impaling to be inhospitable. Okay. Well, if you come in, if you could come back in like three billion weeks. Um, <laughs> okay. We'll, Definitely. We'll we'll chat. I guess. Maybe you could help us develop our weeks. religion and we, we could have a better interaction with... Maybe we could all just go back up to the surface and look at the sun. What's that? Some grass? I think I think, I think we don't want to introduce too many strange concepts right now. I think oh. we should stick with the numbers and then let them wrap their heads around that and then we can come back in 3 to 12 billion years and okay. sort this out. But you promise. You promise to come yeah. back. I, mm -hmm. I promise yeah. that as I understand it, we will come back no later than three billion years. You said three to twelve, so no later than three to twelve. 12 sorry, years. three to twelve billion years. Mm -hmm. Sounds no sooner than good. three billion years. Sounds right, good. But no later than. No later than. Four no, billion no, years. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Okay. okay. It was I've nice been to Lutrix, meet you. the Luminary of Lunacy, the Herald I, of the White Salamander. It's been great meeting you. It has been an experience it, meeting you as well. Yes. Have a nice something. Three billion. Yes, Goodbye. have a nice three billion. Have a good night. What's Hi, night? have a wonderful night. Or I day. Know. Whatever it is for you. Have a great sleep. Um, have a good no darkness. Way. I want to <laughs> say, I just want to say that, like, have a good night is the worst curse you can say in their language. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so, heresy. Uh, you sort of cautiously move your way through, and there's all these lizards are all these geckos very white, very pale, um, looking at you, and they're just all like they're they're slow, and there's murmurs among themselves like this this is weird that this has never happened before. What? And uh, yeah, you pass through the gaping maw of the skull, and um, it leads off into another cavern, <clears throat> pretty wide this time, and then from there, it goes into. You come across into a very large room with a very large pool of water that's almost glass-like along along the bottom. 
and uh, at the pool, it's this greenish sort of glowing water. Down below, there's these very large green um, clumps that are glowing and radiating. And um, there seems to be ancient remnants of concrete like walls, natural rock that are just sort of blended together. And all of it's been painted with this white pale paint um, or it's been chiseled in the rock with the motif of rodent skulls. Hmm. And that's where we'll leave it till next awesome time. I'll just say, are there three billion rodent skulls? <laughs> or is there uh, one, yes, in the one fact that there are only skull. twelve. <laughs> there's, there's a lot, you know. God, that was ridiculous. I loved it. <laughs> that was amazing. It was fantastic. It was so good. Cool. Glad you guys had fun with it. Um, I've actually used that one before, and I, I actually forgot the original version of it but impale yourself on the bones of fish was always the catchphrase that was pretty fun so i like it i like it yeah i, li I like how they have no concept of numbers yes they were never a smart bunch <laughs> so yeah you all have begun your journey and um you are now at the edge of a large pool possibly radioactive pool of water i'm sure it's fine with yeah you'll, you'll be fine everything's fine um I, you, you shoot glowing things out of your brain. I'm sure it's going to be fine. I'll last <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Not much longer if I don't get, if I don't get to sleep. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, as always, you can find us on the social medias at Vorpal Tales. Check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Vorpal Tales. We are Vorpal Tales, and we play awesome adventures and terrifying tales almost twice a week, every day of the week now. Uh, see our calendar that pops up in our show reels and on our website at VorpalTales.com and on our Twitch channel. Also, be sure to check out our shop links in our merch channel and our merch stuff. Uh, if you want, like, Vorpal Tales logos with your coffee mug, makes the coffee taste better. That's not proven, but it's totally a thing. Um, it'll be awesome. Uh, I have been at Space Lord PJs. Check out my doodle website at cartoon.ninja. Everyone, plug your pluggables. Let the viewers know what show they can catch you in next and where they can find you on the web. What cool things are you doing online? <clears throat> I went first last time. I'll do it again this time because I cool. do not care. Uh, <laughs> hi, my name is Dixie Cochran. I work for Onyx Path Publishing as one of the in-house developers. You can find me online everywhere at Dixie Cyanide. My pronouns are she, her. And I'm sure Eddie will talk more about it. But we do currently have the Squeaks in the Deep Kickstarter running as of 2 p.m. today. So it's brand new. Uh, so where you can find me, mostly here for the next few weeks. Uh, I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll be doing this. I'm not one of those vorpal people who's like, I'll play 17 games a week. No. Because I no. I value my sitting on the couch watching The Walking Dead time. Um, Eddie? The Walking Dead? Really? Wow. I just started um, watching it. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Um, uh, <laughs> my name is Eddie Webb. My pronouns are he, him. I am one of the in-house developers in Omics Path with Dixie. I am also the creator of The Realms of Pugmire and the developer of Squeaks in the Deep, which, is, yes, is right now on Kickstarter. Oh, um, I also wrote on it, and you can read one chapter I wrote right now if you pledge $5. Yes. I won't tell um, you which one. It's whichever one you think is better. <laughs> right. Uh, whichever, whichever one you think is best, Dixie wrote that one. Yep. That's, how, that's how science works. Um, we just, as I was talking, went over $20,000 on the Kickstarter. So um, we, we are funded, um, but uh, definitely I have a lot of potential stretch goals uh, coming up, including possibly rules for new species besides mice and rats. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um and if you uh, want to get more information about uh, Onyx, Onyx Path, that's theonyxpath.com. If you want information about me, it's pugstay.com. If you like this nonsense between me and Dixie, you can listen to us every week on Friday at the Onyx Pathcast, which is our podcast that's been going on for a very long time now. And that you'll be recording in 11 hours and 20 minutes. Yes, I have to go to bed, then wake up and do this all <laughs> over again. Yes. Uh, that's me, Amber. Sure. Hi guys, um, I'm Amber, my pronouns are she, her. You can find me all over the internet as Rebel Selkie. Um, I am an in-house educator as well as the small press curator at Gathering Game Buffalo. We are a very tiny board game store. Check us out on Instagram. Um, and I am here tonight, tomorrow, and Wednesday. Basically, if you want to see me Tuesday through Thursday at this point, uh, I'm all of the evening for Vorpal. So you guys are wonderful. Um, and that's it. And check. And who wants to go next? That's why I call on people. 
Because otherwise right. people just sit so there. Like, keep it in the same the order, Zach? Yeah, you call on people <laughs> like you do in Pugmire Combat, which I totally freaking forgot about. Oh, yeah, that was, oh, was yeah. supposed to be Pugmire Initiative, wasn't it? I was, screwed I just up. let it go. I was just you like, know what? You know, you're doing your own thing. I also no, forgot. <laughs> Eddie, you should have said something because I always forget. And don't watch the stream. It's now, it's the whole thing is just me. <laughs> Burn it down. Burn Shut down. It. Yeah, I'm going to erase it. <laughs> because our oh, two yeah. combat had initiative order. The whole yep. thing is. I have just, one thing to say, though, Sean. Yes. I totally would not have chosen the enemy to go after me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I am Devin. You can find me online at Sword of Salud. And next time you'll see me will be on uh, Monday for They Came From Beyond the Grave. Ooh. And unlike everybody else in this chat, I do not have a fun gamer background except for playing with people. <laughs> Zach, I think that leaves you. I, I am Zachary Naldrit. He, him. I am found on the bird app called the Twitter at Zach Rules. It's spelt below my name somewhere on my face down here. It's kind of, maybe. I, I can't see. It is. It is. It is. It is. It I'm is. guessing. Um, yeah, perfect. So uh, uh, next time you will see me on the stream is on the uh, werewolf game on Saturday on Vorpal Tales. Um come check it out i'm playing a, a lupus who does not like the water i found out apparently um uh, i, I <laughs> there, there, there's probably lots of things that he doesn't like um did not enjoy a car ride either but it's, it's it did not go well it's it, they're playing cubs they're, it's the rite of passage okay. um and i have written some community content if you go to my twitter on the linked uh, on the pinned thread, it has everything that I've done uh, because I am new to this and don't have a website to show off. <laughs> also, if I can interject, I just noticed um, the little my little at under my name is misspelled. You guys can follow it by the name in the Twitch chat. Uh, oh, it does say silky, doesn't it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's almost it's, like I had to do I, that at the last minute. I, I, don't I, know. I can't be right. I am yeah. also soft and gentle, but you want the, the mystical fish fairy. So <laughs> S-E-L-K-I-E. Yeah. Uh, but you tried. You did a wonderful job. <sighs> it's Et been a day. It's been a day. Um, cool. And uh, finally, it's that time again, everyone. Uh, vote for whoever was your play favorite player tonight. Also until the show. Well, no, we won't do that one. Um, vote for your player. Vote. Uh, uh, it's been the night. It's been a day. Votes from your pl fellow players will earn you an extra personal fortune next week. Another thing I totally forgot about. So, you know, it's been a while since I run Pokemon. I'm sorry. Um, Eddie, who was your favorite player? Uh, wow, well, there's so many good options, but um, I'm gonna go with Stradeo. I think Stradeo was, was a lot of fun. <clears throat> nice, also almost got carried off by a bat, so yes, right? Yeah, yes, but that, that amazing you. shot was really, really good. <laughs> cool. Uh, Dixie, who do you vote for? Um, I have to go with uh, Eddie for out thinking the lizard people <laughs> who are definitely like once 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 the tag team of of the the investigator and the pedantic wizard type character uh got involved that was just really way too much fun for me <laughs> like any trying fun. to like rules lawyer their religion <laughs> <laughs> nice uh zach who do you vote for you're muted there we go. Now that I'm unmuted, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to uh, vote for Jesk because um, the, the snake uh, antics were very enjoyable. I had fun with that. You mean actual, actual mouse? <laughs> Not <laughs> My mom wanted me to blend in and she didn't know what a mouse or a hat was. Okay? <laughs> she did her best. My heart. Uh, Amber, who do you vote for? Uh, and on that note, definitely Jess. Um, they are a character I kind of want to put into my backpack and like mm -hmm. protect with my life and soul and possibly my body, but I haven't decided. I haven't gone that far yet. So, nice. but great job creating that character. It was a lot of fun to interact with them. Thank you. I was really excited to make a snake, too. So. Uh, Devin. Uh, I'm going to say uh, Vassal, Eddie, because. I, uh, I was about to be carried away again by the scary, <laughs> scary flying thing, and get dropped again. And yay, I didn't get dropped. 
Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm glad to help. <laughs> awesome being excellent to each other. Players, uh, well, Secret Snacks, you don't have to go home, but you can't keep playing this game tonight. Uh, well, I can if I want to. I mean, <laughs> I play with myself. I'll leave the Zoom open, but. Uh, <laughs> you're not, you're not you, my dad. You're not my real dad. Oh, man. Ouch. That Casting hurts. mirror image. My dad went out 17 years ago to get milk, and he hasn't been back since, all right? I do what I want. This got weird. Three billion years okay. ago. A three. <laughs> watch, Visible Pugmire. Watch, watch our Vorpal Tales crew next Tuesday nights at 8.30 p.m., where we continue our underground adventures. And check out all our other shows on our Vorpal Tales, as well as all the other cool shows on the Onyx Path channel. Remember to be a good dog and click that like and subscribe. And for the love of the dice, game on. Bye.